Well, good evening. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Julian Wilcock. I'm the headmaster at John Collett School here in Belrose. Uh, tonight I've been asked to speak about some areas to consider when looking to assist your child in being ready for secondary education or high school, and particularly about how we approach this within John Collett School. I do appreciate that we have some parents this evening, uh, of uh, parents that are listening this evening, have children in kindergarten, the starting the journey through primary, getting ready for high school, as well as some in sixth class, just on the cusp of starting their uh, next journey. So I've adjusted the uh, presentation to talk a little bit about what we do through primary, but also some concrete, uh, uh, concrete advice for moving, uh, which is only uh, a couple of months away into high school. So as a parent of one child who had his first HSC exam yesterday and another child just about to enter year 10, I can appreciate both professionally and personally the nervousness for both parents and students when taking the big uh, next step into high school. Uh, hopefully if we have the opportunity for questions and I can, I can address them at the end, um, you're able to ask questions in the chat box uh, and we'll, I've got someone here who'll be able to help me uh, bring the questions to the end. If you're able to give a thumbs up uh, that you're watching, that'll be great too. Uh, so we know we have an active audience. Um, I can't see you, but you can see me. Also, if when I'm speaking tonight, if I touch on other areas of interest, feel free to pop in the topic, uh, your suggestion. If we get enough interest, I'm happy to offer another session sometime in the future. I do have a colleague here, as I said, uh, who'll be able to take down information regarding that. But tonight I'm talking um, about school readiness. So I'm happy to address uh, questions uh, regarding that area at the end of the presentation, which will take about, I think about half an hour at the moment. So uh, just this week, we've been able to welcome parents, uh, double vaccinated, of course, on site for new admissions. And if you're looking for a primary education, I encourage you to get in touch with us. Likewise, if you're considering a high school, uh, I highly encourage you to take a tour of a high school. Uh, the best way to choose a school, whether it's ours or another, is to visit in person during a typical school day. Uh, you really get a feel for the school um, and it's a perfect opportunity now that schools are opening to tours. So while we're waiting for a few more people to join us, I can give you a bit of background on our, on our school, John Collett. Uh, now, in, in schools in Sydney, there is a trend for some parents to choose public in primary and independent in uh, secondary. For us at John Collett School, we do see primary as fundamental in setting the foundations for students. And for our parents, this is also the case, many of whom will invest in primary and look to public education uh, for their high school. So as a standalone primary school, our students leave us at the end of the year six to begin their next educational journey. We have about 50% uh, who enter independent schools and about 50% who enter public sector. Many will be offered either scholarships or places at selective schools. However, the range uh, to their choices is very broad. Uh, so our focus then is not on meeting the need of a particular high school, but to have students who are confident, resilient, academically secure, aware of their strengths, uh, their areas to develop, so they're ready for any high school. Uh, as I said, uh, about 50% public, 50% high school. Uh, there's even a range within there from small high schools to big 2,000, 3,000 size, or ones that are specific to uh, offering particular things in sports or arts or all girls or all boys. So it's really a focus on the individual. So established in 1985, currently we have just over 250 students attending, two classes per year level uh, from lower first, that's what we call kindergarten through to sixth class. That's uh, 14 classes in total. So about an average of about 18, 19 per class. Uh, in some cases, 17. Our children do stay with the same teacher uh, and uh, class throughout infants, which is three years, after which the children are mixed into two fresh classes before they have a new teacher for two years from third class to fourth class. And then they mix again to form two new classes, moving on to fifth and sixth. Uh, we have a, enjoy a low turnover of staff. Some of our staff have been here right from the inception of the school. Uh, my predecessor, Gilbert Main, uh, the former headmaster, was here for almost 30 years. I'm not quite up to that mark yet. Uh, this is my sixth year uh, at John Collett School. 
Uh, originally from the Northern Beaches, having grown up in Warriwood, but most recently before John Collett School, uh, I was in Singapore for five years in Dubai and for 10 years leading an international uh, school. Uh, sorry, five years in Singapore and 10 years in Dubai leading an international school. So when looking to return back to Australia, I was particularly looking for the diversity my family enjoyed overseas, uh, as well as a school that connected with the whole child and my personal philosophy and um, I feel very fortunate that I found the right place. So uh, welcome again. I think we've got a few more people that have joined us. Um, so if you've just joined us tonight, my name is Julian Wilcock. I'm the headmaster of John Collett School. Um, so I'm going to be speaking tonight on school readiness, getting fit for high school. And I've tried to narrow it down to four main areas tonight uh, while still trying to make it relevant for parents of both young children and children that are just about to enter high school. So I hope across those points, there's something there for you tonight. So uh, the first area I'm going to look at is developing skills in attention. Uh, the second area, really looking at ensuring solid, uh, broad foundation in academics. Uh, the third area, the development of character and values. And lastly, uh, fostering independence. Um, I'll also touch on some feedback from our parents at the end on what to look for in a high school and things we've found useful in surveys we do. We generally survey our, our year seven uh, parents about halfway through the year to see how they've gone in high school, um, feedback about anything we've missed, um, but also to let us know um, what have been the big um, decision points for them in moving uh, into, um, you know, about six months into the high school uh, term. Uh, so firstly, the first section I'm going to talk about is attention, uh, focus, uh, now uh, giving full awareness to what is in front of you. Uh, we believe it is actually something that needs to be taught, actively teaching attention. Uh, and it is a tool best taught from a very early age as children develop. However, it's never too late to learn. That's the good news. Uh, as children move into high school, they do tend to move from a more pastoral environment, such as having one teacher, to an environment with multiple teachers, uh, diverse and distinct subjects, usually a larger cohort of students, source from many schools, and all of this while they're developing quite dramatically too. So the ability to take on all of this dependent uh, is really dependent upon their ability to see through all the noise and attend to what is required and make clear and, and good choices as they move into high school. So speaking about what we do, uh, we practice a method of mindfulness called the pause. Uh, we pause with the children and staff many times a day, rather than moving quickly from one subject to another, we take the time to pause before and after each activity. Uh, it brings us into the present by connecting to the senses and simply uh, being there. So I can give you an example of what we do here, uh, which is basically asking the children just to relax, uh, close their eyes, fall still, and depending on the age, it's usually about five seconds to 10 seconds. And then the teacher would say, Om Paramatmane Nama Atta. And they'd say the same phrase, but with iti to finish a particular activity. It's a Sanskrit phrase, which means a bow to the true self or our best self. So they'll do this when starting the day, when beginning and fin finishing particular subjects like maths, sports, uh, music, or as we sit together to have lunch, uh, even in uh, activities like athletics carnivals, we'll pause the whole school together. And it really sets the tone uh, for a lot of the things we do. And it's a skill that children, you can see them doing almost automatically sometimes. Uh, so in one day, the children will pause up to 10 times. Uh, it helps to close the activity of their minds, what they were just doing and give their full attention to what has come. So before I was speaking here tonight, um, I was answering emails. I paused before I came on uh, online tonight. It gives my attention fully to this. I'm not thinking about those emails anymore. Um, so what we do with our students, we always we all also practice with our staff. So when I have meetings with staff, we'll pause. When we have staff meetings, we pause as well. So again, it really sets the tone um, right, right, right through the school. Um, and it's an ingrained part of the day. 
So why do we do it? Well, our minds are continually want to move from one thought to the next, you know, snowballing from one idea to another, usually just touching on the surface, but always active, um, especially true with young children. So a moment of silence can often bring this to an end, allowing a person to connect with their senses, um, stop that spiral of thoughts, some people call the monkey mind, and give full attention to what is in front of them. So whether this is listening to instructions, beginning a piece of work, or just simply being aware of your surroundings, um, or actually giving somebody the attention they deserve, um, that's the, the, the power of stopping. Um, it's a tool, a technique, to be able to bring you into the, into the present. So as mentioned before, uh, the move from primary to secondary is a big shift for children, and they can become overwhelmed with the environment of new school. There's a lot of anxiety there. Um, you know, uh, the timetable is often more complex in a high school. Um, they're navigating a whole new environment, different social expectations of the peers and, and deciding on where they fit in everything. So some comments our students have made about what pausing means to them are, um, and these were year six students, uh, it's like emptying a bath. It's like starting with a fresh piece of paper. And there was another one. Uh, it's like uh, a fog or clouds moving away. So obviously for a student entering high school, stopping and closing your eyes for an extensive period by yourself isn't practical. Uh, however, there are many ways to bring attention into the present. So uh, connecting to the senses, focusing on the sound, feeling your feet on the floor, concentrating where the pen meets the paper, uh, many techniques, all, all which help stop the spiraling mind and bring attention to the present. So there's lots of research out there. Uh, you're probably aware that a lot of schools now uh, do mindfulness, um, different to what we've been doing since the school started, um, but nonetheless very useful. So a lot of the research um, points to the benefits in regulating uh, children's emotions, uh, not reacting, but responding to challenging situations, being more calm and thoughtful in their responses, maintaining emotional balance, uh, but not suppressing their emotions either. Uh, another area that research talks about is giving attention and sustain their attention or tasks or activities. So including tasks that are challenging or difficult. Um, this is known as self-regulation, being able to do it for an extended period of time. Um, something that's very much expected when you get to high school is longer periods of uh, single subject areas quite often. Uh, it also helps being aware of the needs of others in situations, so showing empathy, care, thoughtfulness in meeting the needs of others, like peers, teachers, siblings, uh, parents too. Uh, these are generally referred to as pro-social uh, pro behaviours. And another part the research points to is just acting in line with their values. So this relates to emotional regulation, but it's the ability to not just step back from strong, strong emotions, but also ability to think about what their values, principles are in a situation and act in line with those rather than just reacting. Uh, when anxiety is high, we can all react very quickly, uh, but being able to pause or even just take a couple of seconds back um, and, you know, think what would a wise person do, um, can really help in making the right decisions and right choices. So that's the mindfulness area. That's one part that I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, the second area uh, I'd like to speak about is just being academically ready for the move to high school. Um, I know many parents are worried about the um, demands of high school, and especially move, when you move up to the HSC, it just increases. Um, you know, ensuring a solid and broad foundation in both skills and knowledge, but also on uh, work habits as well. So if you already have a student in high school, you'll know that your ability to connect with their subjects and support them in their learning becomes increasingly difficult. Ultimately, you have to have trust as you have to have trust as they move away from um, the support that you've been able to provide uh, and that their one on one teachers been providing in primary school. At the end of the day, what you're looking for academically uh, at the end of sixth class is really a student who's able to keep uh, keen to engage, 
in all subject areas and is willing to do so to the best of their ability. So students entering high school have many, many years ahead of them. And while some, some subjects might not be their favourites, and that's okay not to have favourite subjects, they should still feel that they can connect with them. So um, a, a good way of thinking about this is not having the phrase, I'm not good at art, or I'm not good at maths, or I'm not good at writing. Um, they've got many, many years ahead of them where they will be doing maths, where they will be doing writing, they'll be doing art. Um, uh, having having the belief that they connect can connect with that subject is very important. So having um, a, a positive experience in different subject areas and uh, knowing where they um, uh, where they where they're challenged and what they need to do is is very uh, very important and uh, puts them in great stead for moving through high school. So to get there, students need to be encouraged to have a growth mindset. Now, if you haven't heard of a growth mindset before, it's um, understanding that part of learning is failing sometimes, uh, that none of us are experts in all areas. However, with practice and support, we can all connect with any area. Um, so that's about having challenge, um, but again, self-awareness um, that it's okay to fail and you need a trusting environment for that. So. Uh, we believe it starts in kindergarten, ensuring children have the foundation skills required to access the curriculum we teach in terms of this is in terms of academics. So skills such as handwriting, spelling, grammar, times tables uh, helps to develop the children's ability to give attention and be mindful of the greater task. So this is often called cognitive load. If a child is having difficulty in uh, spelling or handwriting, they're unlikely to be giving their attention to what's being written. Uh, it's one of the big reasons a lot of boys struggle uh, with, with writing. Uh, is the stories up there, they might be able to explain uh, an answer to a particular problem, but getting it down in writing um, is something um, that uh, they might not be able to process. So it's having that building block. They might have a great story in their head, but they're unable to express themselves with ease. Uh, so this can lead to students not enjoying and not wanting to write, which is a big loss um, because as my son was going through English yesterday, uh, they're, 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 they're long writing activities uh, and you need to be able to express yourself. Uh, similarly, if a child is stuck in figuring out a maths problem, such as the times tables as part of a larger problem, they won't have the cognitive load to tackle more challenging work. So if they've got a long sum that's got a number of uh, times tables component and they get focused on that, they'll lose the, the bigger picture. They'll feel bad at maths uh, when in fact it's the building block or language of maths that they've not learned. Uh, with this understanding, mathematical thinking becomes more fluid, automatic, uh, and they're able to give their attention to uh, the wider problem. So with the foundation skills in place, it's important to establish connection between subjects and to their practical use. So just learning maths for maths sake um, can be like uh, studying the guitar for years, but never picking it up. Uh, children do need to appreciate why they're studying a subject and why it's useful to do so. So this is why, unless there is a specific need, uh, excessive homework or tutoring might actually put a child off wanting to learn about a subject in a meaningful way. So homework or, or tutoring is not necessarily always the right answer, especially when children are moving into upper primary, connecting those different subjects, what they call transdisciplinary learning, or even conceptual learning, uh, where you're using uh, a number of different subjects to work out particular problems or a project or assignment. Um, makes a more uh, a tangible example of um, why the student is learning a particular subject. So our philosophy is that core subjects like maths, language, science uh, are directly enhanced by applying them uh, within other subject areas. So um, if you don't know much about our school, we have quite a lot of unique subjects, um, such as our Shakespeare program that students are involved in from kindergarten. Just before this uh, webinar, we had our, the streaming of our online Shakespeare with third and fourth class, uh, which was just 
amazing. Um, you know, uh, drama really can bring out um, the best in people in terms of public speaking, but it also makes um, uh, great for uh, development of emotion, uh, being present, uh, confidence in terms of speaking as well. Studying of Sanskrit, which we do as a language. Uh, it's Sanskrit seen as both a literary and mathematical language. It's a way of thinking. Uh, we have a very enhanced art program as well here that we connect. Uh, it's not so much a, like a, as you would see in a primary school, more of a craft program. Uh, our art program has a direct connection to the subjects we teach, like history, science, mathematics. Um, so children can see that connection. And then um, we have other sort of uh, uh, subjects such as Latin, chess, debating, um, those types of things as well, which connect subjects and give children a different way of expressing quite often um, uh, different subject areas that they might not be used to rather than just sums or uh, learning grammar. So our aim is that the content of what we teach is of a rich nature. If you place average material in front of a child, that's uh, pretty much what they're going to learn. If it's not of a higher quality, that's what they'll rise to as well. So if they understand that uh, what they're learning is useful and they can see their progress, they're more likely to want to engage and not switch off. So children do engage more if they're challenged in a supporting environment. Part of that challenge is ensuring that the work they produce is their best. It doesn't have to be the best in the class, but a personal best. Um, so we don't look for children to be uh, here in year one, here in year two. Um, they're all um, individuals. They're all moving at different speeds, uh, especially in primary because it is very developmental. Um, so what we look for is children achieving their personal best, it's a bit like a swimmer. Uh, and the beauty of having a teacher who's been with the students for many years is um, they know the child's capabilities and is able to support them when they need support or challenge them when they need challenge and to celebrate with them as well, which is a big part of uh, learning too. So, excuse me for a moment. So that was the, um, the first two sections I was talking about tonight. And the third area I mentioned uh, I'd like to speak about was um, on character values, uh, or put another way, the soft skills or emotional intelligence for children. As mentioned earlier, practices in mindfulness and regulation of emotion and the development of attention is very useful, of use as well, uh, through though is discussion and the practical application of lessons in how we live our lives um, as part of a community. In the school your students are in, this may take the form of stories or fables, uh, their social studies lessons. Um, in the early years, um, it's usually stories and fables. Uh, ethical discussions as they move through primary um, and social lessons as well. At John Collett School, our students have a weekly philosophy lesson. Uh, it's not trying to figure out the meaning of life, um, although some of them are more than capable, probably. Uh, more about how to live a good life. It centers on, um, I suppose, our, our multi-faith approach, uh, looking at many traditions, stories, legends, with a focus on self-knowledge, empathy, acting in mind for the benefit of all. So for example, um, what's often called the golden rule, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, do not do unto others what you would have them not do to you. Uh, this can be found in, in many areas, um, like the Bible, the Quran, Mahabharata, many non-religious texts and traditions throughout the world. It encourages uh, children to look back uh, or look beyond their own happiness uh, to those of their family, friends, school, country, the world, that our actions are to the benefit of all. So we also continue such conversations as they come in, in regular class time. Uh, we look at our, our values, I've got five values, um, stillness, truthfulness, courage, service, and respect. The stillness is the mindfulness that runs right throughout the year. And then we look at a different, um, a different value each term. So for instance, we're looking at um, service at the moment and we've been concentrating recently on, on children um, being proactive. So uh, not waiting to be asked to do something, but if they see a need doing it, and then the more difficult aspect of that 
is even if they do do it, not necessarily looking for acknowledgement because it's just that job that needed to be done. So it's quite a big concept for primary age children, but um, a, a useful lesson that we do work through. So assuming that your children have the opportunity to engage with a value-based education and have some experience working with others, it does set the foundation um, for the new relationships they'll be forging in high school, because it all will be new. Um, you'll have children coming from many different schools, many different backgrounds, uh, different expectations, uh, especially the first uh, you know, six months to a year, everyone's really finding their, their, in their feet there. Um, and uh, following on from um, those sort of discussions I was talking about in school, um, uh, it, uh, it happens within the home as well. Um, this is not just between student and student, the children, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, might sound corny, but still trying to find the opportunity uh, when they get into those high years of primary and into high school as well, um, of uh, sitting down um, around the table a few times a week, um, having a chat just about the world, doesn't have to be about anything in particular. Um, sometimes it's good not to actually talk too much about what happened in school or the things that need to be done, uh, but just open conversation it can be a great way of airing. Uh, just listening to students' thoughts and concerns about the move to high school can demystify a lot of it uh, without necessarily coming up for the answers. You don't need the answers. Um, as teenage kids will probably tell you, they probably don't want to hear your answers. Um, they're just um, voicing their concerns or their emotions at the time. Um, when, they, when they do want to know, I'm sure they'll, they'll ask you. Um, uh, but uh, keeping that conversation open, keeping the communication open um, is really key um, going into high school there, especially through the teenage years. Uh, also children learn by example. Uh, so it's healthy for children to see parents disagree on a topic, that's okay. Uh, the key is that it's done in a respectful way to one another. Likewise, if you'd like them to spend less time on their screen, uh, then they need to see us as adults doing the alternative. Uh, so doing some exercise, speaking to each other, reading a book, listening to music, those types of things as well. So that's a bit on the, the value side or um, I suppose uh, emotional social side of when they move into high school. And the last uh, area before I take questions that I was just going to mention, just some words on fostering independence, uh, getting school ready uh, for those uh, children who are at the end of their sort of primary journey and, and moving into high school. Uh, this has come from staff experience here within school and parents as well that have uh, passed this on. Uh, so one example is having an agreement on social media and safe searching. Um, students these days are connected and have access to everything on the internet. You can't expect them not to be on there, um, but you can help in, in, certain, in setting the boundaries, setting the time, uh, what's appropriate. It's important that you have an agreement before starting high school. Uh, there's a lot of pressure from, uh, you'll find from other children on what they're watching and what they're able to do. Um, um, but uh, having a look at uh, how you can be sure that devices are being used properly as well. So it is a critical area. Uh, it's an area which can cause a lot of anxiety um, and a lot of problems at school if not handled uh, correctly. Uh, there are some great resources for parents. Um, I'll give you one example is the um, eSafety um, site. Uh, so that's eSafety.gov.au. There's a great parenting handbook. There's great videos. There's all sorts of different tools, um, software that, that you can get a hold of as well. Uh, so you're not alone on that front, but it is a, a big area. And setting those uh, boundaries in the primary years is a lot easier than trying to do it when you're uh, within your sort of seven, year eight, uh, or even even later. Uh, so encourage your child to have a look and explore together the website of their, their new high school uh, that they'll be attending. This is often lots of information on there about extra school activities or camps uh, that they can get excited about, it helps familiarize themselves. I mean, if you can't get on site, you'll probably see some photos, they might even have some uh, videos on there of school life. 
Um, and as I said at the start of uh, the talk tonight, you know, do visit the school and if possible with your child, if you have the opportunity, it, it does um, uh, take away a lot of the, the mystery of, of coming to school when you've had a good look around, makes it less new uh, and they'll be processing it in the time between, you know, now and when they start high school. So when your child does start high school, they'll be getting a range of assignments um, as homework uh, from different teachers. The good, the good news these days is unlike um, when I went to school many, many eons ago, uh, you'd get assignments and you'd just be given the task and that would be it. Most schools now, though, when um, in high school, when they're giving your assignments, they'll also give you a, a marking criteria so what a child needs to do to get a A, B, C or D. And it's quite, quite clear um, and it's a great guide for children. So it takes away um, a lot of the uh, tension, even when you've, you've got those assignments back. Uh, it helps with you understanding with them um, if they've put in a lot of time and they haven't got the mark they wanted on looking at, well, where did it go wrong? Um, it, it, it is a uh, great area that uh, I think children really do benefit from these days that wasn't available uh, when going through school, when myself was going through school. Um, and your child will be getting assignments from many different uh, teachers and homework as well. Word of advice, putting due dates up on the family calendar. Uh, so together you can see what's coming up. Um, quite often the, the Teachers don't might not be talking to each other and there's five assessments all coming at the same time. And uh, the child might think that, you know, they've got a couple of days to do it, but suddenly they've got four assignments and that's when the stress level, not just for them, but for you, uh, starts to pick up as well. So having that up on the, on the fridge somewhere when assignments are due can help you plan together. Um, and another uh, thing that's quite good uh, these days is quite often uh, teachers will uh, when setting assignments, will encourage children to send in a draft before it's due. This is a great way for a child to see if they're going in the right direction. It sets up good working habits, study habits. Um, also lets the teacher know that they're interest, the child's interested in their subject, which is always good. Um, one other point, I um, hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, as they move into high school or even in upper primary, the sleeping patterns change. Uh, studies show that adolescents only really switch on after about 10 a.m. Um, uh, avoiding lengthy discussions in the morning. Uh, you often won't get more than a, a mumble or a grunt. Uh, but in the evening, uh, they're more awake and receptive. So if you're thinking about having difficult conversations as you move into high school, uh, I would recommend looking to the afternoon uh, or the evening as well. Uh, there's a lot of studies out there that sort of thinking that... Um, High school should be starting a bit later in the morning than they currently do, um, but it's pretty much set in stone at the moment, most schools. So uh, try to keep a routine where homework is completed before dinner, uh, allowing your child to relax after dinner. Uh, yeah, keeping a routine uh, where homework is completed before dinner, allowing your child to um, relax as well. Uh, I don't like to do work after dinner. Uh, so. Uh, you can imagine children don't as well. So if they're able to, if they're able to get in the pattern of uh, completing homework straight after school, uh, that's a winner for everybody. Uh, some type of regular sport is encouraged uh, if they're not already doing so. So when they begin high school, uh, you know, um, having those uh, routines, having some exercise releases the endorphins, keeps them healthy, uh, helps them sleep. Uh, also helps with uh, eating as well. But students are far less likely to try a new sport after year nine. So it does help with general sleep, all those mental health socialization as well. Um, but it's really something to start sort of year seven, year eight, year nine, uh, uh, unless they can swap sports, obviously. Um, but a child who hasn't really engaged in sport before that time is less likely to start um, after that time. Uh, so to foster independence uh, with your child, uh, you, you do need to give them space and trust. Uh, as they move into high school, they'll start walking further away. Uh, you can still be the guide by the side, uh, but they do need to make mistakes uh, and learn from them to become independent. 
So like I was saying before with the growth mindset, um, they do need to be able to make those mistakes. And that's part of being independent and growing up too. Um, they need to be trusted. Uh, when looking at choosing a high school, uh, do try to visit the school. I think I've mentioned that a lot many times. Um, there's such a range of high schools out there because children and families are, are very different. Um, uh, and some children will benefit from a smaller school, some from a larger school. Uh, children with gifts in particular areas um, might be looking. You might be looking for a high school with a particular sports program or music program. Uh, it's really looking for a school that would cater for your child's interests and the values of your family as well. Uh, try to look beyond buildings, uh, rankings, um, you know, particularly sort of things like NAPLAN rankings. It's just one test on one day. Um, or, or the name of the school. Uh, tradition is, is good, um, but really try and speak with other parents. Word of mouth is always the best way to learn about new schools and to find out what's actually happening um, on the ground as well. So I was just passed a few questions that came in um, a bit early. I'll just touch on those. Um, and uh, let me see what I've got here. Um, students going to larger schools, oh, how do they fare? Okay, so we, we are a smaller school, about 250 students. And whether it's a small school going to a large school uh, or um, the other way around, it's always a shift. Uh, from primary school to high school because of what I was saying before about having usually just one uh, main teacher. Uh, that being said, uh, the children benefit here from they've got their class teacher, but we have uh, specialist teachers in music, uh, art, uh, languages like Sanskrit, philosophy, uh, drama. Um, so they have, the, I suppose, the best of both worlds, staying with one teacher for a number of years and then having specialist teachers as well. Um, but it is a big shift. Uh, going from a small school to a, a bigger cohort. But, you know, have those conversations with your child, try and have a think about the positive aspects of that, you know, more friends. Um, bigger schools usually have a wider variety of after school activities. Um, uh, quite often their uh, facilities might be a bit better to cater uh, for, for um, uh, the, the range of students they have. Uh, but you'll get an idea of that again by visiting visiting the schools. Another question, uh, do your students go to high school with friends? Well, uh, our, our children go to a range of um, different high schools here uh, at John Collett. Uh, as I said, we've got about 50% that go to uh, independent, 50% that go to, to public schools. But because we offer quite a diverse, um, I suppose, classical program uh, in terms of our art program, the, the Shakespeare, the uh, classical languages um, and we're also a, a vegetarian school that puts on lunch for children so we have parents that come to our school for a number of different areas uh, from reasons sorry and from very different areas so we're here in Belrose in the northern beaches and we've got families coming from you know, Bill Gola uh, you know, Newport sort of way uh, to Manly uh, sort of uh, North Sydney St Ives we've got a few that commute uh, from quite a, quite a distance away. So our, our population is quite spread. We've got about 30% from the local area. So we do find some um, children going to the same local schools, especially if they're in the area and they're looking at uh, public high schools. Uh, we do get um, uh, a few uh, that'll be going, usually when they're uh, all boys schools or all girls schools, we do see a couple coming together, but it is quite diverse and will change. Uh, each year, depending on what families, again, are looking for uh, and the particular interests of children. Uh, one last question I hear, do you use computers? Yes. Yes, we do use computers. It's it's not the core area, I suppose, when I was saying before, we've run a classical education, so very much um, beginning with those foundation skills of uh, timetables, handwriting, um, uh, grammar, those types of things. So we do use IT in the classroom. We've got uh, iPads, we've got laptops, but it's a bit of a low touch on that. We do um, look to uh, ensuring children have those skills that we think they require before moving uh, to into IT. We see IT as a tool rather than learning through it. Um, and again, part of that comes from developing attention. So 
a lot of IT learning can almost be seen as entertainment. Um, so that's like attention that's uh, captured rather than given. So uh, once you take that uh, device away, um, some children might find it difficult to give attention without having that sort of uh, responsive um, uh, or that, you know, that, that uh, responsive entertaining aspect of, of IT. So we certainly bring it up higher as we come into primary, getting children ready for high school, certainly on say searching, um, um, plagiarism, copyright, those types of things. Um, it's obviously very important. And, you know, in the last two years, obviously we've gone from um, a, a light touch on IT to going fully online. Um, so I'm happy to say all our children and our teachers are very well versed in IT at the moment. But it is a traditional program uh, and a, a, a light touch. Uh, we certainly don't have children with devices at school, personal devices, um, but many do access that uh, in the evenings. So I don't think I have any more questions there. Can't see any have been handed any more from earlier tonight. Um, I hope you found at least a few of the points raised tonight relevant to you uh, and your family on supporting your child or getting ready for uh, the move to high school. It's a big move. If you'd like to might find out more about our school, John Collett, you can visit our website, Instagram or Facebook pages. Uh, we have an open day to the public in July uh, next year. Or if you'd like to see the school in normal operations, you can also book a tour by contacting our reception. Um, so thank you very much uh, for uh, listening tonight or if you're listening to a, a pre-recorded version. Um, and I do wish you luck and all the most best success with your children as they move through high school. So thank you very much and good evening.